So I want to warn you that BI formula is not in your book. So you will not be able to figure this one out if you just read your textbook. So they allude to it, but they don't at all show you what it is or compute it. They just act like it's trivial and move on. So this is how you get BI. So we're going to use that to compute the uh, B0. So it's sum 0 to 0, AK. I minus K, uh, oops, I is zero, so better put that in. So there's a sum from zero, zero, so this is A zero, B zero, uh oh, that's not good. B zero is A zero times B zero. B zero is nine B zero, that's not very good. Oh, that makes sense, so we start K at 1 then. <sighs> Alright, so I'm going to change this back to what's in my notes, which is start K at 1. It's going to cause some other problems though. So this is adding up zero terms. So there are no terms here. So I think that means we get zero for B zero. That seems strange. Is that what they got for B zero in, in this example that we're working on? And that's our P0, yeah, probably. Zero well, just that you said that, we Wait. stopped actually a little early because you said you were going to look something out that wasn't making sense or something like that. Yeah, your book didn't have it, so I didn't have a resource to uh, look up. And I didn't write enough notes of when I went and computed this before. Sure, Google knows everything. I don't even know what to put into Google though. You gotta start with the right search if you're gonna have any chance getting to the results that are useful. Uh, so you, we wanna find, we wanna invert a polynomial differential operator is what we're doing. Yeah, so our constants we're going to set equal to zero. I, it looks like they just get a zero from one over the PMP function and then taking out the last constant term. Where a zero is the leading term for that whole thing now. How did they get that in the numer? Go back to the, the top, make the abstract bigger. Uh, 
um, inverse function of the polynomial is orthogonal. No, I don't think that's what I we think need. That's a, lot of a lot of words. I don't. I don't think that's what we want. Where's the TLDR? Mine be somewhere in that document. It seemed kind of. What's TLDR? Too long, didn't read. Oh. <laughs> 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 Have you guys never heard that before? No. Really? I do it all the time. <laughs> 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 Turns out if you read some of that stuff, you'll be in a way better position than most of your peers. <laughs> and you'll be able to crush them in the job market. Well, the, the Unless that's not your goal. Understanding the material you're in, because I could read a lot of things still just be like the same. Oh, that comes to effort, dedication, prior knowledge, and not giving up. Do or do not. Yep. All right, so here's the sentence in your book. It's on page 273. It says, is the series expansion of the inverse operator obtained by ordinary division? So it's easy. Take one over the P of D function, basically? Yeah, but I'm still not understanding how they actually I don't know if it mattered that this that they did this to a degree two polynomial here. I don't know if that's important or not. But it's basically going from all right, so I'll write down what's in your book and we'll see if we can reverse engineer it. I wish I recorded my notes from last year. Oh that's right, you have recorded notes from last year. Yeah, maybe we can go look. Yeah, see if uh, differential equations from last uh, last year is on the, is recorded, and then you get to it'll probably be a very similar date to what it is now, but it'll be obviously last year. It's differential equations from last year. Yeah, it may just be called differential equations because I didn't have multiple ones, and it's probably not the first playlist in there. It's okay. probably like the twelfth playlist or something like that. It looks like these are all the playlists we have here. And is there only one for differential equations? And wait, zoom in a little bit. Is that all my playlists? It's all my creative playlists, yeah. Yep. All right, I guess I didn't record them last. I think I started in the, what I recorded last year. But I can't. Oh, that is true. I don't know if pre-cock one, you used to use the board. I use it again now. Yeah, I don't know if the I don't know if the old notes exist or old recordings. All right. So according to the book. These two are the same. All right, so let's show what's in the book. So this is equal in the book. The five ninths, that's pretty easy to see. Just bring the five across the uh, operator there. So we got five ninths. Thanks. Uh, one over one minus d over three plus four ninths d squared. All right, so that five ninths doesn't matter is the point. It's everything else that's important.
So I'm going to let f of x equal this right here. And I want the, I think we want the series expansion of f at 0. Find the Taylor series. And we're only going to go to the, the degree 2 terms. So we need the degree 0, the degree 1, and the degree 2 term. So hopefully you remember Taylor series expansion. If you don't, Taylor is uh, f of a plus f prime a over 1 factorial x minus a to the first plus f double prime a over 2 factorial times x minus a squared. There are more terms, but we're only going to go this far. So that should be uh, something you hopefully remember. So we need to figure out, well, I can just go uh, a is 0. So I need f of 0 is 1 over 1 minus 0 plus 0, which is 1. So our initial term, t of x, is going to be a 1. Now I need to take a derivative. This is going to be a bit of a pain because I have a quotient rule to deal with here. So f prime, derivative 1 is 0. So we're going to get 0 minus 1 times the derivative of all this stuff which is negative one-third plus eight-ninths x divided by the denominator squared. All right, so any questions on that uh, derivative of f right there? Hopefully that's correct. So I need f prime of 0. So we got negative, negative 1 third plus 0 divided by 1 squared, which is positive 1 third. So that's our f prime of a. So that's plus 1 third. That 1 factorial is just 1. Uh, x minus 0, and that is, uh-oh, we're supposed to, yep, that's correct. All right, so our second term is correct. Now for the serious one, f double prime. So that's going to be, I think call it a P-I-T-A, if we're using acronyms. <laughs> All right, T-L-D-C, too long, didn't compute if we want to be more similar. All right, so find f double prime. I got f prime up there. Find f double prime. And I think simplifying f prime would be a good first move. I didn't do that at all. So let's simplify that. Ugly f prime. Distribute the negative sign. One third plus eight nines x. I don't really want to FOIL this because that's going to be annoying, but if I don't FOIL it, I'm going to have a chain rule which will also be annoying. So let's just go deal with the chain rule and not FOIL it out now. Shouldn't that be minus 8 there? Mm, yes. There we go. All right, that's not too bad for a derivative right there. So we're going to find the derivative right now. So we got negative 8 ninths times the entire denominator. Minus the original numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So that's 2 times 1 minus x over 3 plus 4 over 9x squared times the to the first power, which we're not going to write, times the derivative, which is negative one-third, uh, 
8 ninths plus 8 ninths x. All right, so that's the numerator. Denominator is the denominator squared, which is really the fourth power. All right, depending on what I'm doing, this is actually not a horrible form for plugging in zero for x. So the good news is I just need to plug in zero. I don't need the third derivative. That would be significantly worse. <laughs> Uh, plus, I'd have to do a serious amount of uh, simplifying if I really want to take another derivative. In this form, that's not very fun. All right, so f double prime of zero should clean up a lot of these terms. So all my x's are going to disappear. So we're basically going to be left with constants. So 8 nines plus negative 8 nines plus 2 nines is negative 5 nines. 6 nines. That's our next guess. Okay, so that is f double prime of a. So we can take that negative 6 ninths. Now it's supposed to be divided by 2 from that 1 over 2 factorial we get uh, times x minus 0 squared. So we got 1 plus 1 third x minus 3 ninths, which is minus a third squared. Hopefully that's what we got. All right, see, easy, no problem. That's definitely not worth a full sentence in your textbook. Right there. <laughs> okay, so I tried to give you a formula to get the terms. I'm gonna scratch that out and say you get the Taylor series of the polynomial expansion of the reciprocal of the original differential operator. <laughs> I think that's a way better way to write that sentence than what your book did. All right, so let's try to write that out now. This, by the way, <laughs> was probably not what you were expecting to do. But good thing we learned Taylor series, so we could do this. Now, as to why does this work, that's a more serious question. Uh, you know already that Taylor series gives you an approximation. Now, it's a little weird because we're approximating a polynomial whose variable is not actually a variable. Our original variable is d, which is not a variable. So we're approximating a differential operator using Taylor series expansion. The reason I don't need the other terms right here, what would the third derivative of five of anything x squared, what would the third derivative be? Zero. zero. And of course, the fourth derivative will be zero, and the fifth derivative will be zero. That's why I was allowed to stop on the second uh, power term. But if it wasn't, you would have to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, if that was like the 20th power, I'd have to compute the 20th I was just derivative. At that point. Yeah, that would be ridiculous to do it by hand. Absolutely. Doable, maybe. You take a lot of pages. Okay, so let's correct what used to be written up here. Well, it's still not in the textbook. So m is still the smallest integer. Like I just said, we had basically m is your degree. So it's the smallest integer such that that derivative would one more derivative would turn it to zero. It's basically the last significant derivative that you can take before you get zero. All right, so I'm going to write over here on the right side where bi is the ith coefficient
of the Taylor series expansion of 1 over P of D now if I use these letters I'm gonna write the worst thing ever about the value D equals 0 what I actually did I'm gonna cross that out in light blue what I actually did is I found the inverse uh, the Taylor series expansion of the reciprocal of P of X about X equals zero. So that may make you more comfortable if you swap out D for X while you find the inverse expansion. Now you're wondering what in the world am I talking about? So I'm going to go back to what we just computed. I let F of X, if you look right here, This is 1 over P of X. So it is the reciprocal of our uh, polynomial operator. I just switched to X's so that all the, basically all the work we did would feel just like it did in Calc 2 when we did Taylor series expansion. I could replace every X in here by a capital D but if I do that, it'll look kind of funky because we don't normally think of D as a variable even though we treated it like it was a variable down here when we took derivatives and did Taylor expansion. Does that make sense? Normally D is not a variable, but you treat it like a variable for a couple minutes so you can get the uh, inverse polynomial operator. All right, now that that's taken care of, Let's actually use that inverse polynomial operator. So we just got P inverse of D. All right, so why in the world did we do that? So I'm just writing the original ODE right here. P D of Y is equal to five X squared. So let's move that to an area we have the room to work. I'm moving the operator to the other side, which of course is P inverse D. We just spent all that time computing somewhere that P inverse D, well forget that 5, it was 1 ninth, 1 plus D over 3 minus D squared over 3. 5x squared. Oh, you can move the, f so it's an operator, so you can move constants to the front. So we can write it as 5 ninths. So that's the constant multiple rule, basically. So move that 5 across. All right, now these are pretty easy derivatives here. We get 5 ninths times x squared plus derivative x squared is 2x over 3. First term should be x squared plus 2x over 3 minus uh, first derivative is 2x then second derivative is 2 minus 2 thirds. And we just distribute this across. We got 5 ninths x squared plus 2x over 27 minus 10 27 So what are we trying to do right now? I think it didn't do so much work and I got lost halfway through what exactly we're trying to do. Remember, this is equal to y. We just solved it. Oh. <laughs> it's good timing. Basically, yeah. Uh, I mean, this one happens to be y equals, but you know, when you get rid of your derivatives, you're done. Assuming you did all the steps correctly. You're going to have to say y equals, but I can't see you're already done with all the derivatives, and you're not going to be anything Some of our solution forms have like y hidden inside. It's what we call an implicit solution, where it's like uh, maybe 
I don't know, constant equals function of, you know, some function of y or something like that. Uh, this one happens, this solution method gives us y equals function of x. All right, how in the world do we know if this is correct? Because I just did a whole bunch of stuff. Plug it back in. So this, re this required using a Taylor expansion, which was a random tool from Calc 2. So this went all through, this is the scenic route to find this uh, solution. So let's check it real fast. Our original uh, equation is pretty easy to check. I need the first and the second derivative and then plug it in. So let's check it right now. So find first and second derivative and plug it in. You don't even need chain rule. This is all just easy power rule stuff here. So I'll rewrite the original ODE. You can take derivatives without knowing the original right now. square term. Oh no, the x's are not canceling out. So on the, the this term here? Wait, so that is that okay? Uh oh. Oh, wait. Oh, that guy should be a. There we go, that one. Okay. Rookie mistake, man. Oh no, that changes everything. So that would be 10 27 10 ninths, so. Wow, it's gonna mess up couple things up, so that two, basically two twenty sevens turns into ten twenty sevens. Ten five x squared. 
there's a ten. All right. Forty knights. That should be ten knights. That five should have an x squared on it. Minus ten x. All right. So the ten x minus ten x. Those cancel out. So let's just cross them out. That turns not going to be there. And. 40 minus 10 is 30. And what about that? It, I mean, it better be, or else we did something wrong. But then I still have that minus 10 thirds. Oh, okay. Ten third. So that's 20 ninths, which is the same. Wait, t is 10 thirds? 10 thirds, yeah, that's minus 20, no, uh-oh. <laughs> Stupid numbers. Uh, so that shouldn't, that 10 9 shouldn't be there. All right, just erase terms if they don't work out for you. <laughs> Oh, I'm horrible at arithmetic. <laughs> if you haven't figured that out yet, <laughs> I can do a Taylor expansion, no problem. <laughs> okay, so that's obviously 5x squared. All right, no problem. So we will do one more problem. And this will actually be good timing, so I'm going to have you invert the operator for homework. So I'll write out as much as I can without actually inverting the operator. And then you're going to go and invert the operator with the Taylor expansion. All right, write down the operator that gives you y double prime minus 2y prime. So write down that operator. So you should have gotten d squared minus 2d. There's no uh, regular y term, so there's no constant uh, term in our operator. So any questions on the operator right there, d squared minus 2d? So P of D is D squared minus 2D. So I need to find P inverse of D. How many terms do I have to expand up to? I'll give you a hint. You have to look at the function on the other side. How many derivatives until that turns into zero? One. One. So you only need to take, so the first derivative turns into zero, so you actually only need the zero term on the Taylor series expansion. So find the zero term on the Taylor expansion. Should be very quick. So I'll write P of X is X squared minus two X. So a one over P of x is 1 over x squared minus 2x. Uh-oh, we can't expand at 0. That's not good. Hmm. Yeah, you can't. Uh, yeah, there's no. You can't plug in 0. Ooh. Yeah. I actually gave two problems on a calc 2 quiz that were unintegrable. Oh, they on the same quiz? Yeah, well, th what they had to compute uh, surface area and volume, so <laughs> all the points were in the setup, but they got two integrals that were not. One that was, it was so easy to write, it was just find their perimeter of an ellipse. <laughs> Turns out that's an infinite series expansion. There's no closed form for the <laughs> perimeter of an ellipse, despite that it sounds so easy. It should be very close to like 2 pi, maybe a times b instead of 
or square root of a times. It's not at all. <laughs> all right, so I'll figure out how to solve this one. Uh, actually, oh, I see a comment that we have to get to. All right, so we can't ex expand the way I showed you here. So what we're going to do is write it as d times uh, d minus 2. And the good news is we know how to invert the d operator. It's the antiderivative. So all we have to deal with is d minus 2. So we'll do that tomorrow.